Good morning. I'm Jerry Tan. It's a pleasure to join you today from Windsor, Ontario in Canada. Thank you so much for the invitation to present on rosacea. Today I would like to present to you information on advances in rosacea, particularly those that are clinical and practical. And my conflict declarations are here, where I have served in industry as well as on expert committees for the National Rosacea Society and the Global Consensus Group for Rosacea called ROSCO. These are the diagnostic criteria for rosacea developed in 2002, evaluating primary features and secondary features. Do you use these criteria? Let's look a little bit deeper into each of these features because for each of them, the primary features, for example, flushing, non-transient erythema, that is persistent erythema, papules, pustules, and telangiectasis, can those truly be indicative by themselves of rosacea? And how about the secondary features? Are there any there that have been excluded from the primary features that should be considered? Starting with flushing, we know that flushing by itself has a low predictive value of being indicative by itself of rosacea because many other conditions can cause flushing, including postmenopause, certain medications, emotional flushing, for example. Papules and pustules also have a low predictive value because the most common presentation for papules and pustules in the face is actually acne. And other differential diagnosis includes folliculitis and pseudofolliculitis and telangiectasis. On the face, many people have facial telangiectasis. If you look at areas around the perinasal area, for example, Almost everyone will have, every adult will have a few of these telangiectasis. So is that indicative by itself of rosacea? And how about the secondary features? We know that with FIMA, there are very few other conditions that explain FIMA. So by itself, why is that not part of a primary feature? These were the subtype uh, categories that were developed by the 2002 expert rosacea uh, committee from the National Rosacea Society, erythematotelangiectatic, which included flushing, um, and central facial erythema, and potentially telangiectasis. So it was a combination of two. Papulopustular had central facial erythema and transient papules and pustules, and then there was phimidus and ocular. And do you use this classification? The issues with this particular classification is that each of these features can span multiple subtypes. Facial erythema can go from erythematophalangiectatic to papulopustular. can also, of course, involve phimidus rosacea, can also involve ocular rosacea. And so can papules pustules. It can involve all those subtypes except erythematophalangiectatic. And you can see then that it becomes increasingly confusing using four subtypes to describe the multiple features that patients with rosacea present with. And is that accurate? Is that straightforward? And is it simple to think about in terms of management? And I would suggest probably not. So one of the major advances that was uh, developed over the past few years was updating these diagnostic criteria. And it was first developed in Roscoe and then also uh, subsequently uh, agreed upon by the National Rosacea Society. And what are these updated diagnostic criteria? Only one is required, persistent centrofacial erythema or phyma. For major, any two are required, that is transient facial erythema, inflammatory papules and pustules, telangiectasis, except those in the perioral, uh, perinasal area is what I meant and ocular features. And then the minor features, which are symptomatic, are typically not included in the specific diagnostic criteria. So one of the major advances over the past few years has really been thinking about the, the diagnosis and the classification of rosacea so that we'd like to replace 
the word subtypes with phenotypes, which is features-based, which is how patients present. And we can track that by indicating how patients present when they see their doctor with which features, and we can mark down by your assessments how severe it is, mark down on the patient side how much it bothers or impacts them, and then over time evaluate how they are responding to therapy and whether any new features develop longitudinally. This is a means of developing a management strategy for patients with rosacea based on features. You see across the top uh, listings of different features from transient erythema all the way to phyma, which is divided into inflamed and non-inflamed. And as far as the rows are concerned, these are treatment options starting from general skin care, gen gentle skin care, including sun protection, and then topical medications, oral agents, and procedures. And each of these treatments have a role to play in individual features of rosacea in patients who present to us. So in summary, I wanted to present to you one of our major advances over the past four or five years in rosacea research and thought is that it's moving towards this features-based or phenotype approach. Why? Because the diagnosis is simpler, it's more accurate, and it's much more informative to both the doctor, the researcher, and the patient because it allows us to focus on those features that patients present with. And those features then allow us to develop treatments that are sensible for patients. Thank you very much.